When you increase the calcium concentrations in your muscle, it's the same thing as working out. It's like, you get these contractions, right? And that right there is improving the mitochondrial mass. But that just makes me sound like a crazy person. I want more energy. I'm sure you want more energy. We create energy in the mitochondria. So it would just make sense that if we have more mitochondria, we could create more energy. Instead of just loading up with caffeine and a bunch of things to give us sort of this stimulant, let's actually figure out how we literally create energy. So what I have for you are ways to increase your mitochondrial mass via different foods, via different kinds of hacks, but also just specific kinds of exercise, okay? So let's go ahead and let's dive right into what you can do to get more energy powerhouses inside your body. First thing I wanna jump into are gonna be foods. Okay, there's a few foods that you can eat. First one you're gonna love me for. Okay, it's gonna be chocolate. Okay, eating unsweetened or at least stevia or monk fruit sweetened chocolate has huge effects. Okay, so here's what we have to remember. Whenever we want more energy, our body creates that energy through the mitochondria. But when we deprive ourselves of energy, like when we're fasting or when we're just caloric restriction, the body tries to get really efficient at creating energy. So the mitochondria gets more effective. Well, what ends up happening when that is occurring is you have the elevation of something called PGC1A, okay? It's a gene that gets expressed. And when PGC1A gets expressed, it basically talks to the mitochondria and says, hey dude, we need to create a, a bigger version of you so that you can handle more energy. Well, it turns out that chocolate helps you have more available PGC1A. So if you have more of this gene available, you have more potential to trigger mitochondrial growth or mitochondrial mass increase. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Neuroscience that found that consuming chocolate actually increased the amount of mitochondrial proteins. So showing that chocolate consumption directly improved mitochondrial mass. Again, bigger mitochondria basically means a bigger nuclear power plant creating energy within your body, okay? Here's the cool thing. If you combine chocolate, or just kind of not necessarily at once, but with green tea, green tea has different benefits. Green tea, because of the EGCG in green tea, it has the ability to deacetylate or unlock the PGC1A that you have. So you can have more PGC1A, but that's great. It doesn't really do you much good unless it's been deacetylated, unless it's been actually uh, unlocked. So when you have this deacetylation process that occurs as a result of consuming green tea, you just unlocked the PGC1A. It does this because it's activated by something called SIRT1, which is sort of a longevity gene, which we can talk about in a different video. It's fairly complex. Okay, by the way, uh, check out Ujido Matcha down below in the description if you wanna try some green tea that I recommend. It's a matcha green tea company, but they're 187 years old and they harvest their green tea leaves, like the baby green tea leaves in Japan, in the shade, the way that you're supposed to harvest green tea. So highly, highly, highly recommend them. So if you see me sipping on a cup of something a lot of times, it's almost always matcha green tea. And there's a special link just for people that watch my videos down below in the description. And a big thank you to Ujino Matcha for making this content possible and continuing to support this channel for so many years. The next food that I wanna talk about is capers, okay? So capers are super rich in something called quercetin. There's an interesting study published in the American Journal of Physiology, Integrative and Comparable Physiology, okay? So this took a look at mice that were fed a good amount of quercetin. And they found that when they consumed this quercetin, they had an improvement in their PGC1A levels. But they also saw an improvement movement in their SIRT1 levels, and they also saw more mitochondrial DNA. So here's what this means. The energy factory within our bodies, that powerhouse, it carries its own DNA. And if it has more DNA, then that means it has more ability to express itself. So if you were to take you and you were to say, the essence of you is your DNA, but we were to double your DNA, you would be twice the essence of yourself, right? I know it's a little bit deep, but the point is more DNA means more you, right? More you to spread. So mitochondrial DNA, if we have more DNA, that means more potential to be able to spread. Okay, so when we improve that, we are at the genetic level making it so that we can potentially create more energy. So capers, chocolate, and green tea, put it in a blender and chug it. Just kidding. Okay, but anyway, that combination is pretty powerful. Now we move into the next one. Exercising in a fasted state and taxing the muscles with eccentric contractions. Okay, and I'll explain why. So when we exercise in a fasted state, we increase what is called the AMP to ATP ratio. Simply put, it means that because we're working out, our body senses that we're in kind of an energy deficit. This by itself funnels the body to make more finely tuned mitochondria. 
basically the body says, uh, uh oh, uh oh, we're in a deficit. We need to get efficient at creating energy. So let's make more effective, more efficient powerhouses. So all of a sudden it goes through this process. So that alone, exercise, yes. Okay. But then we look at when you do eccentric contractions, you create a lot of reactive oxygen species, a lot of stress and sort of toxic compounds within the muscle as a result of those eccentric slow fighting contractions, right? Like if I'm doing a bicep curl, this downward motion when I'm fighting on a slow eccentric contraction, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so that also creates a higher level of calcium concentration within the muscle. These two things are direct and potent activators of PGC1A. So if we are looking for, again, that upstream just regulator and the downstream regulators, S, uh, NRF1 and NRF2, that's how we molecularly kind of get the activation of the mitochondria. So yeah, if you're into hacking your body and looking at the biochemistry and you don't just want to take people on the internet's word for it, then you can double check this research because we want to back it out and look all the way at the molecular level so you could be the best version of yourself. Then let's talk supplements for a second. Okay, resveratrol is a pretty interesting one. Now it's a potent antioxidant, so I don't recommend taking resveratrol uh, in a fasted state or pre-workout, okay? Because it's going to hurt the effects of a fast because you're kind of buffering some of the uh, antioxidant abilities your body would naturally have. But what's interesting is that resveratrol is a potent activator of CERT1. CERT1, I know this sounds so complicated, but CERT1 is the longevity gene. It is associated with kind of kickstarting all these longevity processes, one of which is activating PGC1A. So by activating CERT1 with resveratrol, we indirectly are activating PGC1A and thereby getting ourselves more mitochondrial mass. But additionally, resveratrol activates AMPK. So by simply taking resveratrol, your body suddenly registers that you're in a little bit of a net loss. And it starts, again, prioritizing mitochondrial mass in an effort to produce energy. Now here's a fun one, some cold exposure. Yeah, sitting in a cold room or doing an ice plunge or taking a cold shower activates what are called uncoupling proteins. Uncoupling proteins are proteins that allow us to dissipate calories as heat. This is phenomenal for fat loss because yes, we just take calories that we would consume and they get dissipated as heat, much like a, an old school radiator heater that's just taking electricity and dissipating it as heat. Same kind of concept. But what's interesting is researchers said, well, wait a minute, uncoupling proteins sit on the membrane of the mitochondria. So there has to be a correlation with exposing ourselves to cold and increasing uncoupling proteins and mitochondrial health. So they dove into it. So the Journal of Physiology published a study and researchers had found that cold exposure triggered higher levels of calcium concentration within the muscle, very similar to exercise. Probably because you're doing this when you expose to cold. You're tensing up and you're contracting, right? And that contraction, just like working out, is triggering those calcium concentrations. And there you go. You have that PGC1A activation via that, that method. Okay, and the last one is caloric restriction. Not just fasting, but periodically going a longer time between meals or calorically restricting, right? Simply because what that's going to do is again, it's going to force your body to become efficient at producing energy. So then when all of a sudden you do eat, the mitochondria is like, oh, here we go, boom. It's like, Let's say you had a power plant or a factory that just wasn't really good at producing energy and it was trying to figure out what was wrong, but they didn't have the resources to make a bigger factory. So they just were like, well, I guess we better get really good with what we have. So this factory that's running on like one cylinder is like kaput, kaput, and it's getting really efficient at that one cylinder. And then all of a sudden, all eight cylinders start to run and it's like, whoa, we figured this game out. So then it's like super effective compared to other eight cylinder factories. So hopefully that makes sense. Anyhow, when you sum it all up, you want green tea, you want chocolate, you want capers, you wanna be exercising in a fasted state with eccentric contractions. You wanna be supplementing resveratrol in a non-fasted state. You wanna expose yourself to cold and you wanna do some caloric restriction. Not in that order, not all at once. I will see you tomorrow.